Ladies and gentlemen, for a session sponsored by Travelsify, please welcome co-founder and CEO Travelsify, Bruno Shavat, in discussion with Skift X research editor Jeremy Cressman. Uh, welcome everybody to today's session with our partners from Travelsify and welcome to Bruno. Um, just wanted to set the stage real quick before we start jumping into questions. Um, we're going to talk about a new artificial intelligence technology that's helping convert more than 400 million traveler opinions into actionable data. And that's data that's helping hotel brands to make smarter business decisions. I think all of us here in the travel industry know that customer reviews are a critical component of the customer buying process, our marketing strategy, right? But up until now, it's been really difficult to look at this unstructured feedback in a way that helps provide a holistic view of the brand experience. So what do guests actually really value most in a hotel? And also, what do guests truly associate with a hotel brand, right? So now, with the help of artificial intelligence, we can not only answer these questions, but also quantify what that hotel experience looks like. So uh, Bruno, let me give my interpretation of what Travelsify specializes in. You've got this product, it's called Hotel DNA. Uh, it's using artificial intelligence to assign different descriptors that help explain what guests think about the experience in a given hotel. That's my skipped explanation, but I'm curious to get your thoughts on this. That's a very good explanation. By okay, you want we're to done. Job? As I said. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just to give some, uh, some background, uh, several years ago, as a frequent traveler, I realized that there was a huge gap between the, uh, in the hotel booking funnel, let's say. There was really a mismatch. The hotels speak about price and amenities, while the guests expect values and experiences. But at that time, people from the industry told us, guests are only interested in breakfast and Wi-Fi. So we decided to really look at that, and as you mentioned, we analyzed more than 400 million reviews. And we discovered that people write as much about coziness and spaciousness as about breakfast, and they care four times more about decoration and atmosphere mm -hmm. than about Wi-Fi. So it was really what drove us to develop that AI-based technology in order to extract the hotel DNA attributes in order to have really what the guest uh, what values uh, the guests are looking for when uh, booking or staying in a hotel, what the experiences are. So whether it's cozy, whether the room is spacious, and uh, we have developed that really understanding that uh, approach. Mm. As you mentioned, there are several companies looking at uh, guest reviews, but uh, most of them, if not all of them, are interested in the fact that the guest liked or not this hotel, punto we go one step or two steps further. Right. We would like really to understand what guests value most in their experience in the hotel, which means that we would like to know whether they stay in this hotel because of the uh, uh, spaciousness of the room, the shopping uh, area, or the views. And uh, in order to do that, we have something which is quite unique as an innovation, which, which is really one of the key innovations in our approach is we are able to know whether this hotel is luxury at 80% or 20%, spacious 30% or 70%, mm. which means that, as you were referring to, we are able to quantify the experience. And if we are able to quantify the experience, it means that we are able to compare the hotel. Mm. And uh, to have a fair comparison of hotels is at the heart of everything. Mm -hmm. Why? Because as a guest, when you would like to choose a hotel, you would like to compare fairly to hotels or several of them. When you are a hotel owner, you would like as well to compare your hotel versus the competitive set. Mm. So fair comparison is at the heart of everything, and without our approach, we are able to do that. Mm. So I would say that, and that's a, a, an analogy that we are often using, it's like Netflix. Netflix did reverse engineer the right. uh, Hollywood industry by creating 77,000 subgenres for the movies and TV series in order to have a granular understanding of each piece of content and to be able now 
to set up their own, to create, to produce their own mm. TV series. Yeah. With Traversify, we are doing the same to a certain extent. We do reverse engineer the hospitality industry in order to really understand the hotel DNA and therefore to close the gap between the guest expectation and the reality. Mm. It's so interesting, you know, you just mentioned Netflix and you think about this idea of what opinions, customer reviews really mean, right? They're very subjective. It's just impartial data, right? Um, I think we all know that this hotel experience can be very subjective. So I'm curious if you can explain how Travolsify makes it possible to actually quantify this, this topic, this data that can be kind of, you know, different depending on who you're talking to. We, we like subjectivity and we cannot say uh, a stay in a hotel is an experience without keeping in mind that it's subjective. Mm. So let's say among the various pillars on which Traversify technology is based, there are two which are truly important to understand this subjectivity appeal and to transform it into something which is objective. The first one is the fascinating, what I, fascinating because I like that mm -hmm. theory, which is the wisdom of the crowds. And wisdom of the crowds basically says that it's, you can trust more the collective opinions of individuals than the advice of one expert, one single expert. So that's very important. The second element to understand the, the subjectivity of these experiences is what we uh, combine with the wisdom of the crowds is the sixth function mm -hmm. of the language by Jacobson. That's mm -hmm. a little bit uh, uh, quite uh, nerdy in terms yeah. of, uh, but um, mm -hmm. that's about linguistic, semantic, and uh, we care a lot about uh, that. And uh, the sixth function of the language transform the element of communication into data points, mm -hmm. to make it simple. Mm -hmm. So combining wisdom of the crowds and uh, the six functions of the language enable us to have the understanding to pile up, to aggregate as many Mm -hmm. subjective opinion mm -hmm. to create an objective view. Because when one person says something, it's subjective. When 258 say the same thing, it's becoming more objective. Right. So that's the way we are really uh, transforming that subjective, that addition, aggregation of subjective views into something which is uh, really objective. Mm. And once again, looking at these 400 million reviews helped us to understand not only the, I would say, the Western view, but we, uh, we mastered the, uh, the languages, many languages, including Chinese, Japanese, which means that we have also the understanding of the cultural background, which is obviously a, an interesting, intrinsic element in the, uh, the understanding. Mm -hmm. Spacious True. does not have the same meaning in China, Japan, or the US. Right. We take that into account. Yeah. So that's the, the, the way we can transform subjective element into, um, into uh, something which is uh, much more objective. And I would, uh, it's interesting because we see that there are big players, IG, to name one, uh, because uh, Keith Barr was uh, here, sure. uh, but also Myatt, who are looking at uh, attribute-based booking systems, mm -hmm. not only at the level of the hotel, but at the level of the room. So I think this is not tomorrow morning that they are going to deliver that, but this is definitely a great direction. Yeah. And in order to go to the attribute-based uh, booking at the room level, you need first to start with the attribute base at the hotel level. Right. And uh, I would like to paraphrase the motto of uh, one large uh, hotel group, who says, every moment matters. I would paraphrase that in every experience matters and we have to quantify it. Yeah. So I think we've got time for one more question. I'd like to ask you, you know, you've explained how hotel DNA works, how you're quantifying this. How would a hospitality group actually make use of this data? You know, I've heard you're working with brands like Accor since last September. Tell me, how would they apply this to what they're doing? I would say that um, the uh, asset light hospitality groups are two clients, the guests, but also the hotel owners. And they have two businesses, to make it simple. Mm -hmm. A little bit caricature, but simple. 
They have two businesses, one which is to manage brands mm -hmm. and the other one to uh, manage guests. Mm -hmm. And actually, the two elements are really, there's a, a real symbiotic relation between brand consistency and guest loyalty. And if you bear in mind that the, uh, the large US group, for these large US group, about 50% of their paid room nights are coming from loyalty card members. Mm -hmm. It means that it's super important to deliver to these uh, loyalty card members a brand consistency, not at all standardization, because standardization would kill the brand, but consistency. Therefore, we provide uh, data to really capture these two challenges on the brand consistency side and on the personalization side. Mm -hmm. And as their business is related, int intricated, our data, our solutions are as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's unfortunately about all the time we have for today, but thank you, Bruno. It's been really interesting. You're welcome. Thanks.